Bryce came out first. You what? Bryce came out first. She cold. <laughs> <laughs> Throw it in the oven with the top on. Okay, so now we're going to get started. Good evening, good afternoon, everyone out in foodie land. So, I'm your home chef, Nick. I'm your host for today. And I have three guests with me. We have one guest who's coming, and we're gonna we're gonna pick on her when she gets here and stuff. Cause I know her, that's why. <laughs> but yeah, pretty much, you know. Uh, but for today's menu, we're gonna do a few different things. So this month, I'm doing mac and cheese, but I'm doing different flavors of mac and cheese. So today, we're gonna do a crab mac and cheese today, as well as a smoked prime rib. We're gonna do mussels and wine with pasta, with some aromatics added into it, and. We're going to do a little small appetizer revolving around mushroom caps and being stuffed with cheese and some crab meat and a little bit of guacamole. So, no allergies, no corns. Anybody ready to introduce yourself to Foodie Land? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. You first. <laughs> All right. This is Hank. Oh, no, you know what camera you this is Hank. Go by Rami Ram on the socials. Happy to be here. Okay, uh, I guess we got me in. Yeah. This is Nicole De Candice, and I'm an author, educator, and my, I have my own podcast as well. And I'm a foodie, definitely. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Dawn. Um, retiree in school, in oh. culinary school. Uh, and I'm here to enjoy some food. This is exciting. All right. I'm gonna get started. All right, so I'm gonna get started with the um, obvious one, which is the appetizer. So I've got a little plates right here for you for sampling. Thank you, Linda. Yes. Thank you. Feel free to drink as much as you want. We made some sangria ahead of time. Which is good, that way. So in the sangria, it has a couple different things in it. So Sangria has um, actually some uh, bourbon, it's got some ginger ale, it also has in, um, some Malibu rum. And then it has a blended red wine, and it has a starter of uh, Sangria wine in it as well. So the goal was to have everybody have the same green wine because it's after 3 o'clock. And 3 o'clock, you know, yeah. we're already done with mimosas for the day. But sometimes you just want to drink what you like. <laughs> or what you want. I usually prefer a white, but this is good. You prefer a white? <laughs> what you find with that? I'm good with this. Do you like, your, right. do you like your whites um, dry or sweet? Or somewhere in between? Or somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. So, these are the mushroom caps. Okay. So some mushroom caps are already full. Okay, we just have to add a couple more pieces to it for it to be full. And last piece of the last piece of the ingredient is going to be is going to go in the oven for about uh, about seven eight minutes. Okay, so that's how we're going to do the mushroom caps. So we're going to place this over here out of the way to be ready for it. Do you ever cook with margarine or are you straight butter? Straight I butter. cook with everything. Okay. I didn't really learn the difference between like the different tastes of butter and margarine. Mm -hmm. Probably about two years ago. Really? Mm -hmm. I used to do margarine, didn't think anything of it until my sister was like, oh no. Mm -hmm. And once I started cooking with butter, I've never gone back. I only cook with bacon butter. Yeah. So, I, it is. I just got put on to the Irish butter. Okay. Yes. Oh, Irish world butter. of a difference. And it's huh. expensive. Yeah. It comes a smaller. Kerry Kerry yeah. Gold. I think that's the name. Kerry Gold. It's very rich. It is rich. For those at home, I already put the butter in. Now I'm going to add in some red onions. I'm gonna let this salt out. So you mentioned earlier um, off camera, or I think we may have already been going live, but you're in culinary school yourself, man. Yeah. 
and you were talking about the whole aspect of banking and how, I guess, complicated it is, but you know, all this is chemistry. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, actually, that's, that's so funny because we just did a um, discussion question on um, chemistry and, you know, the traditional versus uh, how we cook now, modern cooking, and how science, now they're paying more attention to the science mm -hmm. of it. Um, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't. So from watching like the Food Network, mm -hmm. you hear a lot about building flavors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is about building flavors. Yes. Um, so with this appetizer, you're going to have a couple of flavors in your mouth at the same time. You're like, right. wait a minute, hold on. I don't know how I feel about this. That's something else hit you. And exactly. it, it's, it's crazy how well, I I'm, all of the senses coming together, right? Something that smells good can actually taste good just because of the smell yes. itself. Yeah. Yeah. That is that is so wild to me. Mm -hmm. It's all connected. Yeah, it is connected. I work with a, um, I used to work with a young lady that is actually over the science department. Oh, can you? When was the last time you had caviar? Never. Really? Never. In a while. In a while? Okay, so. This is the secret ingredient okay. I put into the appetizers. It right. goes in last. It does not go in the oven. It goes mm -hmm. in last. Yeah, it's a garnish. And yes. Yeah. And since you never had it, they definitely have to try red. Okay. If you had black before, you have to try red. But I worked with a lady that um, it ended up being the head of the science program in the district I worked for. Mm -hmm. And because she has science background, mm -hmm. that's why everything she makes is so delicious because she adds that extra element of knowing you know, the science behind why this flavor needs to go here and when. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of like explained that to us and I was like, oh, so that's why everything you do is like, just like that. <laughs> All right. All right, cut up some strips of beef right here. So this goes in here next. Because some of the mushroom cats will have beef in it. Some will have shrimp. Some, no, not shrimp, crab meat. And you, you say you're sauteing the vegetables, not just sweating them. Sauteing. Okay. Um, now I put beef broth in here already. It's a little soaking beef broth, uh, and I added in the beef to it as well. That gives another complexity to the red onions that I will be putting with the mushroom caps. And I went ahead and took the mushrooms. So, I'm telling you. Please don't. Every time I that's like, like this, that's like, like, you know, that's that's like hard. That's, 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 that's too close. That's hard to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it will be. <laughs> He's like, how do we do that? <laughs> Alright, so we have some cheese already. This cheese is already seasoned with some old fat. Okay. Okay. So that will go on the mushroom guys as well. Okay. okay. Mushrooms, I never, so I joined this class. Um, mushrooms is one of his biggest things, my chef. He's always like, oh, some mushrooms, all these different types of mushrooms. mushrooms. Some mushrooms that look like, I don't want to eat that. So good. But you know, if, so you have, if you have friends that are vegan or vegetarian, the fact that you can actually season them and make them taste like any meat. Really? Yes. That's, that's one of the big ones. <laughs> that, yeah. Yes. Because you can make them taste like fried chicken. You can make them taste like beef. You can make them, you know, whatever. It's all about the seasoning and how, um, how it's prepared. Mm. You know, you, they, they transform. They're like okay. chameleons. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of water, too. Right? Here's your guacamole. Down. So this was our uh, already prepared ahead of time. So yeah. as you see, I left the seed in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there are two uh, couple of things you can do to keep my guacamole from turning brown. So you probably know this when you're cooking classes. So citrus, you know, uh, lime, lime juice, and then you get lemon juice as well. Um, is the may not know. Okay. Sour cream. Huh. So, and only a spoon, a spoonful of sour cream. Okay. So if you, if you have a bowl like this big one, right, just put one spoonful of sour cream in okay. and leave the seed in as well. All three of those, uh, it'll give a, a light green texture. But after that, it's done. So, with Avocados, avocados is going to take the heat away from anything in the rest. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, it takes away heat, right? So you can do, you can do uh, jalapenos, or you can do some uh, other peppers that like, raise, raise the, the ceiling, you know. Uh, scorpion peppers are a bit overkill, 
Um, you can do some uh, other peppers. You can use some jalapeno powder you know, to keep to keep the warmness going. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. We now have. So here's the skillet. Well, let me wait some minutes off so you can see. Because, you know, you know, you can go on Yelp and kind of look at those reviews and I tell you some people can be brutal <laughs> with, with their, you know, with you know, their reviews and sometimes you can ask friends, but not, not everyone's palate is the same as yours. So, you know, you know, where are some places that you all like to go? In this area? Mm -hmm. I like to be around water, so the harbor, the wharf, some good places there like Redstone is one of my favorites because I'm from up north. And there's a few of them in the Philly, Jersey area, so mm -hmm. I was happy when they built that one in the harbor. That'd be in that time. And then on the other side, Old Town, there are a few places like Ada's and uh, other name. And what does Ada, um, I guess, specialize in? Ada's is a little bit of everything. Okay. You know, they do the seafood, they do the meats, a lot of veggies, like mostly the cauliflower. For me, it's the view. Okay. Yeah, the aesthetics, the ambiance and aesthetics, yeah, that, that makes a big difference. That is, I hear the chef has moved on. So I'm curious to see that the always difference. always makes you nervous, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> and I'm curious to see what it's like now in real time with the new kitchen team, but I was pleasantly surprised for it to be a new restaurant that opened up during COVID. Hmm. I don't think I have a restaurant. Um, I love a good steak. So I love a good steak. Okay, well, how rare do you like it? Medium. Now. Now. <laughs> okay. Now that I'm in uh, okay. school, okay. I'm all about some medium steak. Before okay. I was like, I always say, can you make it medium well, but more well than medium? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like trying to find that, that balance. Yeah. But I ever since you I've been, it's, it's, it's the thought. It's the thought. It's the, it's the red no, you're for me. Right. It is. It's the red for me. That's what has always shied me away from prime rib. <laughs> because it's, it's so red, red right? Yeah. But um, I think the best thing I've ever had, um, and I like I like A1. I just like the way it tastes, yeah. right? So people get angry, like, oh, put no steak oh, sauce on my steak. But it. I just it's like, yeah. I just really like the taste of steak sauce. Yeah. It's not that your steak is bad. It's just that I like the taste of steak. I like the seasoning. But the first time I had a steak when I put absolutely no seasoning, no A1 on, was at Rare Steakhouse, downtown DC. Oh. Rare. Very sad. I need, and I need you I, to try bourbon, bourbon steak in the Four Seasons and then compare. Okay. Because I was all hearing all this. Wow, this is the best thing I've ever had. Um, and I'm a, I like ribeye. Mm -hmm. I like ribeye. Uh, my ex, he, he always got the um, the New York the New York strip. Sure, yeah, and it looks good, mm -hmm. right? But it's just something about a good ribeye. A good, well, yeah. and, and I try to make it myself, but I'm just I feel I feel bone in or bone out. Bone out. Okay. Bone out. Um, I try, I, and I still I, to this day I still continually try to make a good steak. There's so many different ways you could make it. You could right. you, you could do the cook a little on the stove, then throw it in the oven. Mm -hmm. There's the reverse sear. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of different things you can do. So, I made a steak um, for my mom and my son, right? Because they were all about some, no, well done. And I'm like, just just, just please let me just do this. This is what I learned in school. It's just like, no, absolutely, well done. Oh, no. But when she smelled, when she came, I was talking about this, the yes. scent, the smell. When she came upstairs, she was like, oh my God, what is that? That smells so good. I was like, oh, that's just the 
the thyme and, and the, the garlic and everything getting ready for this mm -hmm. medium steak. Oh, and okay. cook with butter? With, with butter, yes, yes with rosemary. butter. Rosemary. Yes, rosemary, the pop, pop, pop. You know, when you throw it in there, you hear yes. the popping sound. I'm like, yep, that's it. It's, it's ready, it's ready. It's doing, it's doing what it's supposed <laughs> to do. And my mom ate a slice of medium steak. She was like, and my son now, because he didn't like steak because he said it's always so tough. It's always tough. That's he just said. No matter where we go, you know, no matter where restaurant we go to, he's just like he, just, he says it's tough. But when he took a bite of that medium steak, I made him a believer. I made him a believer. Well, my favorite steak restaurant isn't it's not in D.C. Unfortunately, it's actually in New York, and it's actually the oh. first steakhouse in the nation. Gallagher's. Oh, Gallagher's. Okay. Huh. Oh, yeah. nice. Gallagher's. And okay. some were planted by accident. Um, I'd gone up to New York to see a show, and we were hungry. Mm -hmm. It was a matinee on a Sunday. And, you know, we were, we were roaming the streets. So, you know, they had these little small streets, like, almost like highways with the actual streets. You cut down, and that's what Gallagher's was. Hmm. So, the um, the night that we went, Ben Marine was in there. Hmm. And it was, it was a Sunday. It was kind of quiet. But that's when we learned it was the first steakhouse and it's upscale, huh? Yeah. And um and the fact that it started out as a speakeasy. Okay. So then I went to Vegas and then they have in New York, New York, a Gallagher's there. So if you have an opportunity to, you know, to go to New York, try Gallagher's. Um, they do family style. So that means all the entree all the um sides are really huge. So you can right. share it with the whole table. So well, that's what we have here. Yeah. Here are your appetizers. Okay. Yeah. Get a picture of this if you want to. So you have your seasoned shredded cheese with obey in it. You have your crabby in it, some guacamole in it as well. You have your slivers of red onions that were sauteed with some slivers of beef. Okay, so this is not going to go in the oven 350 for about six or seven minutes, depending on how you feel. Okay. You want the cheese to melt. That's the whole goal. Say fifty pays the bills every but, time. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, you, but I hate to say it, you know, that's an us thing. You know, we, we don't believe in our, in our oven's going above. Yeah, we, we really so. don't. We're, we're, I think we're scared of anything that's above mm -hmm. 350. It's dangerous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's like well, cooking anything fast, like yeah. you know, we used to our parents doing slow and steady yeah. cooking stuff, a medium simmer. Yes. When you're cooking, I mean, that, those flames are just burning, and you yeah. just gotta learn to do yes. it quicker. It's tough. I'm like, can I turn it down a little bit, Chef? He's like, absolutely not. He claims that some kitchens don't have a, a adjuster. Um, adjuster. Yeah. I'm I like, what? I believe it. You just have to learn how to manage the heat. And, and that's where your schooling comes in place, mm -hmm. is knowing how to do that. How do we feel about steakhouse chains, like Ruth Chris? Ruth Chris, I'm so mm -hmm. sick of you. I'm, I'm not going to say that. But everyone always like makes a big deal about Ruth Chris. I'm like, okay. It's, it was regular to me. Yeah, it was same. Okay. It's regular. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a mom and pop type okay. of person. Okay. You know, if it ends up branching out and becoming a semi-local chain, I can get with that, but I think once it becomes bigger than that and becomes national, a whole bunch of them, it kind of gets into what we were talking about. Water down. Yeah, water down, have and, to, and, th and things seem right. Like, well, yeah, they, they have, have to. to. So they have to get that stuff out. The, the whole thing is about volume. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to say they say statistically speaking that each table in a restaurant can net ten thousand. Mm. So oh, when you really yes. Between five and ten thousand. So that's why when you go into restaurants, you know they're always about that time crunch of you know mm -hmm. on, on, only an hour, or two hours, you mm -hmm. know, and, you know that type of thing. Where they always come by asking you because I know I them because I be sitting there. They be like, you need anything? You yeah. need anything else? I be yeah. like, no. But you know something? Outside of brunch, I rarely see a time of a place on restaurants. I don't think they or verbalize. Or yeah. I think yeah. it's more of the. Can I help you with anything else? And can I help you with anything when else? When they're really, really high end, they kind of, in their own way, do kind of play it out there. Um, but, yeah. Oh, I'd like, I'd, I'd like to bring you to check. Is there anything else? Yes. <laughs> like, no, we're sitting here talking. It's a silly We're thing. getting away from the kids, all right? This is our time. <laughs> so we had this, we had this crab mac and cheese. So we saw the butter going at the bottom of the pan. And then we see the noodles. And then we saw somewhat complete going. Is that what that was? Yeah. So More butter? Butter. More butter. 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 It does. Oh, sorry. No butter. Yeah. Now, butter and garlic for me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so the old base can get sprinkled on, okay? 
Now, I'm also going to sprinkle, start sprinkling in the crab meat. But before I do that, I'm going to do the evaporated milk next. Okay. Okay. The whole goal is to make this thing cheesy, right? And ooey and gooey. See, when I make mine, I start off with the roux. So do I. So I do you know, the butter, mm -hmm. the flour, yes. like that. Gotta make sure you get the... Yeah, get that consistency yes. going. And then that, add in some uh, heavy cream, half and half. Mm -hmm. And then throw in some seasonings. So this is new for me. That's okay. That's but true. it gets you to where you want it, which is something that's delicious. Oh, hell yes. You like make you want to slap somebody. Damn. Good. That kind of reminds me how um, there's certain things that, you know, when it comes to a lot of meals, you have people that strict roux and mm -hmm. people that don't do roux at all, period, when it comes to making mac and cheese. I'll tell you one thing. When I saw a um, homegirl in Philly put all those eggs in hers, I was like, You want yeah. to in it? I was like, whoa. Because huh. it was eggaroni. It wasn't no more <laughs> huh. But people love her food. She dumps pounds of domino sugar in her, uh, in her sweet potatoes. Yes. Mm. People love it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I side eye her for some social media though. What is that? Um, the restaurant that's in DC, um, Carolina's Kitchen. Carolina's Kitchen. Carolina's. What do y'all think about that? I haven't been. Carolina Kitchen. I remember I when they first greens. opened up about ten years ago, uh -huh. or maybe a little bit more. I think they were better then. Okay. Because. They it's too commercialized. Yeah. They lo they lost the uh, the love. But that's what happens when that's you get too like you get too big. But it's crazy. There's only like three locations. It's it's used to be more. Really? Really? Because I know there's PG, yeah, there's, there's, more. there's PG Plaza by the movie theater. You mean by Major Johnson? At PG Plaza? No, no, no. That's that's uh Capital. Largo, that's why. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they have Hyattsville. So it would, but it was there ten years ago. Yes. Hmm. Before the mass exodus of that place, I think the only thing left is like Chick Fil A and Fridays. Wow. But um, then there's the one in uh, Northeast on Rhode Island Road. Mm -hmm. That's the one I always. I but that's the only one I've ever been to. Um, the greens, the greens hit every time. Um, the rest of it, I can do it all. But the greens definitely hit every time. I think which I I think which I'd be careful with. You know, one thing that chains to a certain extent have over mom and pop spots is that I don't know if when they are conveying their recipes or the how to when it comes to certain things that they do, if it's all the way universal. You, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So if you start off say it was like, you know, we're related. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, sisters cooking or whatever. Mm -hmm. It gets so big that other people have to be in the kitchen. Right. So are we really conveying how those recipes are supposed to roll out, what the expectation is? You know, different chefs do different things. Yeah, so so you know, once you take your hands off of it, you know, it's you know, you have people sign non disclosure agreements. Oh, so, yeah. so so that you know you can, Yeah, okay. so that you can keep things going, but I don't think that it always happens with mom and pop. Whereas in that's one thing that happens with um your chains is that, you know, it's it, it has to be in that book. You have to do it by All that right. book. Okay. So yeah. So it goes to like you got QC or your, yes. your, your, your own locations. Yeah, you have to. Mm -hmm. You have to. And you have to do quality control. Because I think sometimes we take our hands off stuff. We're making money. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're happy to, you know, we're making ends meet, you know, you know, our bottom line is being met. But at the same time, that quality control aspect isn't always being met. Mm -hmm. And we have to stay on top of that just so that our name stays relevant. And people don't have conversations like we have right now, which is, well, they were hitting, but now they're, mm -hmm. you don't want to ever be, you know, you don't want to ever lose your relevancy, mm -hmm. you know, when it comes to your business. Um, how do we feel about the food scene in the DMV? The I know I've lived it's okay. hit and miss in some places. Because I know I've, I've lived other places. You probably have since you serve. Mm -hmm. you. I have a live by travel. Travel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I find it to be underwhelming at times. It is. It is. The emphasis on the crab. And I understand, right. you know, we, mm -hmm. we are where we are. And the lack of, like, variety. I guess. I think we expect a lot just because of us being us. We yeah. expect, like, because food brings us together. Yes, it does. It brings us it together. Does. It makes us happy. Like, you know, anytime you have a bunch of people together, first thing we say is, what are we going to eat? True. That's a fact. 
Oh, what we going to eat? Or better than who's cooking? Because I need to know that. In advance. In advance. <laughs> what, 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 do I, what do I eat before I get there? Yeah, right, yeah. Let's talk our top ten with who all over there. We need to know that first. Right. right. Who's cooking and then who's cooking what? Who's cooking what? And what time will the food be ready? Those are four top. And that's make or break. That's yeah. make yeah. or break if we even going to show up. All right. Yeah, who, who's all there? Make or break. Oh, look at yes. that. Yes. Here's your appetite. Look at that. Yes. Yes. Before and after. Uh, no, wait, tickets are taking place. Hurry up, this is hot. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I got it. All right, you got it? You got it? All right. All right. <laughs> what I can say is, I, as I was watching him do the mac and cheese, he was layering it, but he was also stirring it up as well. So it was all kind of like, you know, getting, you know, milled in together. So. All right, this is going to be a 425. Uh oh. Uh oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Okay. You know, you drive a car a little fast. Drive a car a fast. That's above 350. You know we don't do that. <laughs> you got to keep your eye on that. <laughs> All right. So, like, All right. All right. so for those in Foodie Land who saw me doing what I was doing, okay, here's what I did. I put in the evaporated milk in both, okay. Then I put it in. I also had the, had the butter in it as well. There was already about four pieces of butter in the in the in each pan. I added two more pieces of butter to each pan. Then I put in the shredded cheese over top of it, mixed it in, put in the creamy, mixed it in. I also Put, if I had to take a measurement of the old bay I put in, uh -huh. probably about a teaspoon, would you say? It wasn't okay. much. It was not much. Okay. Because here's the thing. The crab meat itself has its own flavor. Yes. You don't want it to you don't want to overpower the meal. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So you need to put just okay. a little bit of old bay, which is probably a teaspoon. Okay. And then after that I mix it in, as you saw, and then I put in a whole lot more cheese on top of it. Mm. Now that's two more steps. It don't just go in the oven. I was waiting, please don't ask for a pop quiz because we don't get it. So it's two more steps. It goes in the oven, all right, for about 20, 20, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. Halfway through, we take it back out and we put in more evaporated milk into it. Oh, and okay. then we, And then we, and then the final piece is, and it's just about done, we put in more the cheese. Cheese, okay. That's how you get your roux. So the roux takes place wow. during the process of being in the oven. Hello. Okay. So, okay. so you skip that stove top step, okay? I just I look at different recipes, and I look at different ways of how to cook, mm -hmm. and I figure out how how can I cut some steps out and get to the final product easier, okay. and still without losing the flavor. Exactly. Yeah, because that's the point. And so what happens is on the end state is when you take it out of the oven when it's halfway through, you know usually you see stuff that sticks to the sides, well not no take it out halfway through, put your spoon in. Okay. Nothing sticks, and you 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 know mixing it all back together again. Put in another can of evaporated milk in it, just to add to that cheese and to it, adds more cheese to it, and you're done at that point. Yeah. And that probably keeps the cheese from being rubbery on top, because you know mm. because you know when, when people overcook the cheese on top, huh? You know. Okay. Well, you should do that for everything. You know you um you, you know you let it warm and let it heat on its own without having to you know cook it. Cheese okay. is funny. Okay. <laughs> I so, didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Now we just figured out how we can do a shortcut. Okay. So I don't want you to burn your mouths. So when I'm, I'm not going to give you the appetizer just yet. Because it's going it, it, to, that's hot. That's hot. So I know, right? And mushrooms do carry a lot of heat. Because it's a lot of water. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the, um, the prime ready. So I'm going to show you how at home in Food Lane had to do the prime. So I use. Um, Peach butcher paper, okay? That's how, that's what I do at home. And I will wrap the meat in that with a rub, and then I put it on the grill. Now, I'm gonna show you the before, because I already have the after right here. Okay. So let's get started with that part. So let's talk about smoking it versus the traditional way of making it. Okay. okay. Sure. What do, what do we, what is the chef's recommendation? What is the difference in flavors? Mm, okay, so for me, because hearing smoked is different for me, I know you can. I usually hear regular or blacking. I, I rarely mm -hmm. hear smoke as an option. So for me, I do smoke because I want to uh, enjoy the flavor. If you put a nice rub on it, okay, then and you put a nice seasoning with it, you can do a little, a few different things with it. And you get to enjoy that flavor, especially if you the more hours you have it on the grill. That was on the grill three hours. 
And the temperature did get above about 500. I think needs an exception to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But here, there's more than one way to do it, okay? You can also do it at home in your oven. Okay. Now, if you're going to do it in your oven at home, I urge you to make an, uh, an herb crust for it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Herb butter. Okay. So when you do it at home, right? Get you some soft but softened butter. Mm -hmm. so let the, just let the stick stay out for 30 minutes to an hour before you even use it. Get you a bowl like this or something, right? Get you and get like some, some thyme, some basil, mm -hmm. uh, some um, garlic. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes. <laughs> um, and a few Mix, other fresh, yes. The whole thing is to have fresh seasonings, like even cilantro and parsley. Mm -hmm. parsley is fresh. Chop it up fresh, and then mix it up all together into that, that herb butter seasoning that you're creating. Rub it all over this. Okay. Put that oven at 500 degrees. Okay. Once you have it at 500 degrees, put this in there about 30 to 40 minutes and then just turn the oven off. It's going to still cook in the oven. But you want that oven as hot as possible. Right. Okay. So, so 500, 550, keep it up there. And what you're going to and make sure you have it in a pan similar to this okay. that I, I have mushrooms on. Mm -hmm. So that um, all the butter and stuff just falls, and the fat falls off into the bottom. Mm -hmm. And you don't have any gas moments in your oven that you got to clean up later. So. What do they call it? Compose, compose butter. What is the technical term? <coughs> when you mix all, when you mix different things in the butter and you churn it and you use a blender. Uh, what is that called? I uh, think it's like composed butter, or closet heard, butter, or I've heard of it. Because we, we, we made little. some in class. We I'm made some in class, and that's what we did. Um, they put the butter in, uh, butter in the blender, and then you put your different whatever whatever flavor butter it's is composed, it's composed, composed butter, butter right mm -hmm. oh compound butter compound, compound butter, compound butter. Compound there butter. it is You've been paying attention. compound <laughs> butter i have a stick in my freezer right now um, garlic so, and thyme they about compound butter yeah. i showed up <laughs> i said i showed up on the tech what episode okay i know i know there it is how y'all doing so for those of you playing i just put some jerk seasoning in it I also put some garlic, I'm going to put some Cajun seasoning in it as well, not a lot, just a little bit. This is the rub that I put on the other one. And we're going to see what it looks like in just a few minutes. So do you think, do you all think that sometimes we over-season stuff? We can. Yes, we can. I think sometimes we over-season stuff. Because when I went into the kitchen, I was expecting to see seasons all over the place. He's like, no, we just no, got some. seasons all over the place. That should be no, not the wall. Not here, but I'm talking about Yeah, oh, here. Here. here in all the they had was uh, salt you know and pepper. On me. And I was I like, like what? what? He got seasons everywhere. I was like, yeah. what? Oh, but yes. it was just the herbs, <laughs> just the spices. Oh, right. For those at home, I'm Absolutely. using mambo yeah. sauce. I'm putting it inside the butcher paper. Uh, okay. I think for the purposes of what you do in school is because they really want you to understand the craft of the foundation of your meat Okay. And you know, when it comes to baking, the foundation uh -huh. of you know how to you know how to blend everything together and then everything else comes with time. Because you, you have to think about how once you get through all that fusion. Okay. Fusion baking. So okay. that's that's what it's it's all about knowing those like bases. Really surprised. Yeah. Like, why we we have salt and pepper? Like what's going on? Well, I think it's a lot about knowing <laughs> flavor. I think it's a lot about knowing flavors, flavors too. And the science. I think it's the science. Cool. The science. Yeah. That's they want you to understand science. And they probably, they probably unteach us some things too, because everything that we learn wasn't right. <laughs> you, you, High you, blood pressure. Yeah, we be doing too much sometimes. And, like and, and <laughs> I, I always have to stay on 350. Uh huh. You know, so, so you have to unteach us <laughs> some stuff. Get you down to the bedroom. Another thing I used to do pepper. that he used to be like, "Why do you stir so much?" I was like, "Because we're supposed to stir." He was like, "Stop stirring it! Stop yeah. it!" I was like, "But." Yeah, yeah, Especially when you're baking. <laughs> Okay. So if you think about it, the bacon cream mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited about so the bacon. I'm, yeah. I'm excited about the bacon class because eventually I would like to start. You put it on the grill? 
yep. some of these foods with some THC. And I'm not, you know, everyone does the brownies and the cookies. I want to do something different. Let's do something different. Please share. I, and so I'm really excited about the baking. I'm just not excited about the weight that I'm sure I'm going to gain because I have a sweet tooth. I have a sweet tooth. <laughs> this is why you invite people over. Yeah. You're not the only one here. This is the finished product. Yes. Yeah. This is the finished product. I love how the parchment paper works. You taught me something new after the ribs. I love how this works. Now, you see, all this is just juicy. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm around with you, see all the juicy is just really popping out of this thing. Yeah. Wow. Oh, wait. It's great. Now you would think on the grill for over 500 degrees, there's that thing burn as hell, right? Yeah. Nah, look at dry. this. Dry. Nice. Look at this. Oh my goodness. This is not dry, is it? Oh, nope, it's not warm. at all. Oh, wow. look, oh look, look at that. Look wow. at that. Wow. That looks like a well, picture. You, you shot a whole block 350 and carry. You all of the fat. <laughs> you got all of that out of there. And I swear, right. I watch Barbecue Masters too. I've never seen this technique, so it's amazing to me. Uh, Alright, so who wants, a, who wants the first taste of this? Shit, I'm late. Give me a taste. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this is what it looks like. Oh, we're going. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like Fruity Land. Well, those are Lane. Here we go. Have okay. it still dripping. Exactly. Alright, so it's gonna be a little pink. I even learned that cutting your meat is an art to it. It is. Cut against the grain and all that. I was like, what? You never use a knife that doesn't have a straight edge. Okay. For states and things of nature. Okay. Because you tear up the texture of the meat, mm -hmm. and you do a disservice to the meat. To the meat. Okay. I didn't know. I didn't know that. Unchopped, I think. A guy did that by accident. And he they laid it. into <laughs> him. <laughs> no, you didn't say unchopped. All right, so here you no, go. No, white food never go on time. So. Laid into that guy. Just but you Thank figure, you. as a professional you chef. You should know better. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Gotta know your cuts. There you go. Wow. Small cut. Back today. Turn that. I was like, what? Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. Oh, good. And I can see you guys. I guess you already know how I do. I just tore it. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Please. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I have some cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, now you just saw how much what was in the rub, right? Mm -hmm. And you saw me sprinkle. Well, I put some mambo sauce inside the butcher paper too. Okay. So the mambo flavor has its own distinctive it taste, does. right? Mm -hmm. So you have the jerk, you got the mambo, mm -hmm. you have a lot of other seasonings already in it, okay? Mm -hmm. And all that you see, you got, look there. Do you know how mad I'm? I am like I want to go like this in the paper because <laughs> I know I shouldn't. I know that's the fact. I'm giving you I'm giving you side eye. This alone. <laughs> I'm I want to go like that in the paper, like no, ah. you can't. I'm giving you side eye. Right now. <laughs> and the big DC for mango good. sauce. Mm -hmm. Is that is original? Today? But this does not taste like DC Chinese. This, I'm not. That's not lie. big China. This is mm -hmm. better. That's this better. is better than. And, and I get offended, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm from DC, <laughs> born and raised. I'm, I grew up on mango sauce, but this is better. This is better. Some people comments mm. in the live. I know, I know, <laughs> but this is better. Right. Boy, you in the big China <laughs> on New York on uh, Rhode Island Avenue? Mm -hmm. I heard of it, never been. Mm. I'm All right, so we're gonna put this, this in the pan for right now. <laughs> we can put it over to the side. We had this later for dinner. You don't want to put all the grease in it? No, I'm just playing with you. I'm just messing. Just take the clean to it. <laughs> We're gonna do a spot so I go hard. Uh, crab mac and cheese. Ooh, look at that. Looking pretty good so far. So in five minutes, that time is gonna go off. We're gonna put in the crab and milk in it. I want some more cheese. So while we wait on that, you know, we've already discussed our favorite restaurants and wine and how we feel about chains and steak and 
And I didn't. I never did get a chance to tell you all the rare the steak, the better for me. What? The rarer the steak, the better for me. Really? Mm -hmm. oh, I can't oh, go rare. You want a burble? I can't go. You want a burble? I can't go rare. <laughs> I can't do it. I, I can't. Mean, I rare. can't bring myself mentally to. So you doing steak talk Reconcile talk. that. <laughs> I can't reconcile oh. that. Yeah. that you just serious yeah. steak real quick. And the, but the thing is, is that it has to be an expensive cut. You just okay. can't do that with to any old thing. You just okay. you cannot. So you, you, you bring no flat iron over here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you can't you can't just do that with any steak that you get from the grocery store. You have to, okay. have to be a you know, butcher cut. Where do they even where? Where do y'all get y'all butcher cut steak from? There's a butcher in Springfield that is highly recommended around here. That's the only one I've heard of and I've mm -hmm. chefs like Nick okay. swear by. Hmm. I don't know any of DC or Maryland yet, but I, think I constantly hear about a butcher in Springfield. Okay. okay. And since you're from and since you're from um Philly? New York. New York, but wow. you're um, from Philly. Okay. So you know about writing terminal. So you know when you. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Terminal. So you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you think about like New York coming down here? So as far as the food is concerned. Yeah, because yeah, there's a lot right. to offer up there. It's night and day. And I think one of the reasons why I'm critical about the food down here is because growing up there spoils you to the fact that you can literally get any kind of food, yes. ethnicity. That's it, what it's, it is. It's at your hands. It's a melting pot. You would yeah. expect that Any, in DC. Any time of day. Yeah. You not. You just don't have to do carry out on, okay. a, on a late night. Like literally anything. So you come down here. It's just like, oh. Well, wow. what's your favorite wow. hole in the wall? Hole in the It depends on for what. Like we talking pizza, right, so we talking Caribbean. Like what are we talking? Like, All right. So like, the, what's gonna make your tummy feel young? Any time, any time, please. I like footprints with Caribbean food, and they have an extensive drink menu. Mm. Like, it's like a cheesecake factory menu for their drinks. Okay. But the food's good, too. Now, I guess what we're going to do. Okay. Yummy okay, y'all. I feel so fancy. We're going to put a little bit on each one. Now, caviar is fish eggs, right? Yep. Yes. Mm. Okay. Don't knock it till you try it. I'm not. I'm here. Something different. Oh, this is very different. <laughs> I will make believers out of people. Mm. I've always shied away from capers, so we're talking toppings. But I recently had double eggs with capers on top. Yes. I was like, oh, what okay. is a caper? And I've, I've had double eggs with caviar. I grew up eating, oh, eating eggs. Thank you. Bon appetit. What is capers? I can't explain that. I just know they're very good. It's a bitter. little salty, <laughs> green yumminess of goodness. Yeah. Salty, green yumminess of goodness. It's funny. On the way up here, I was talking to someone about um, Caribbean food. 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 Caribbean Guacamole, <laughs> say <laughs> green. Say green. Sour cream, y'all. You got a bunch of little flavors going on with that, that mushroom cap. Oh, a bunch of flavors. Wow, it's bursting. It burst, Emma. Okay. And, that, okay. and that's why, after you've had it black, reminds me of tuna. After you've had black, you need to try red. Okay. Does he have red? No. Oh, no. I'm just saying you try red. Okay. Similar to you, I've always shot away from that. Yeah. You, you hear, oh, I have no idea. It tastes just like it. anything you cook, it'll just transform into that. Mm -hmm. Not even like Bacon, mm -hmm. onion, caviar. You got some crab in it. It's mm -hmm. good. Yeah. I've tasted it. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, next part. We're going to take, take out the crab mac and cheese, and we are going to do some things to that to make it better. I'm about to grab the mushroom cap. Uh-uh. Hi. Did I get one paper towel? Yes. Me. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, sorry, food? chef. I'll take Thank you, chef. Good. So the mushroom cap, thank you. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. Also the mushroom caps? Mm -hmm. so good. So good. So good. I've been missing out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, did I tell you something wrong when I said there's going to be different flavors? Your, your palate's going to be confused a little bit? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My palate is disoriented. So you have two pans with me. I can take one home. No, this one. Really? Yeah, I might. Oh, watch yourself. Oh. <laughs> so you've come to a couple of these. Mm -hmm. oh, this is my first time. Oh, my name is Susan. Hi, Susan. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> is your name really Susan? No. So. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Joke's on me. <laughs> he told me I had to change my name every time I come here. And I was like, I need to change my wig. I don't have a wig on. Me. Oh, okay. So I'm going to put it on. Okay. Now, I want you to see. Mm -hmm. See this? Mm -hmm. It's not sticking, right? Right. So now we just go ahead and stir it up. So. Did I miss where you put more stuff in there? I miss it too. What cheeses do you have in there? It's a blended cheese. Okay. I don't want to tell so, you I'm being secretive. <laughs> okay. So I respect cheese. it. I respect it. All right. So, <laughs> as you see, going across all the sides, right? Right. So nothing is sticking. Right. To your point, making the root. Yes. Very cheesy already. I see mm -hmm. that. Here is the piece. You add in more. Okay. okay. Have you ever made your own, um, what is it called? The um, half and half? Mm -hmm. I have Learn that's just half milk, half cream. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> It's like you, it's, it's like you find yeah, out when you when you have a recipe and then yeah. you realize you don't have everything yeah. that you need. And you can just make it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can just it's make it. <laughs> same, same thing with buttermilk. You make it buttermilk. Okay. Okay. Oh, that sounds scary. It does, but it's easy. It's milk with vinegar. Okay. Yeah, just a little bit of vinegar. All right, see? There we go. Yes. All right. <laughs> I learned that when I needed some garlic butter. Okay. Yeah. The reduction of vinegar, I learned a reduction of vinegar brings out the flavor. It's, ah, uh, the redu reduction of wine, right. vinegar, yeah. like, I had no idea. And that's why they only have three seasonings when you go to school. Because <laughs> <laughs> they want you to learn these things. Learn to do yeah. it. Yeah, they learn to do it. Okay. I but can do it. I can do it. Yeah, I can, I can create those good. flavors. Yeah, yeah, that's what the... Reduce it. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. Gotta love school. <laughs> gotta love school. But I can't. They teach you the fundamentals. Yeah. Like I said, but I'm mm -hmm. just like really intimidated about the baking. Mm -hmm. Only because it has to be like precise. Mm -hmm. Like the measurements have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. So you said it's gonna go back in for about ten more minutes. Ten more minutes. It's gonna go back in. Okay. Are you gonna cover it or uncover it? So uncover. Okay. So it's gonna burn on top. Yep. All right. It's gonna burn on top with the added uh, yeah. cheese on top. Mm -hmm. Do you use convection or regular? Uh, regular. Oh, okay. The difference between um, convection oven and using the convection setting mm -hmm. and regular. I've made some, I was just wanting to see the difference. I cut up the chicken because now yeah. I don't buy chicken pieces. So I've been to school, I cut up my own chicken. Give me a whole chicken. Oh, yeah, you, you, you've really been to school. <laughs> the rest of us are like, the chicken's only $7 dumb. compared to mine. You know, yeah. the chicken already cut mm -hmm. up. Um, I Ten took minutes. some of the chicken in the convection, nice. used the convection um, setting, and then I used the air fryer. Yes. Oh, and which one do you think I like better? Oh, air fryer. Air fryer. I did. Air fryer. I was I'm like, this is so good. Yeah, the air fryer. <laughs> Michael Dam is one of the greatest inventions ever. Don't do it. <laughs> the air fryer? Oh, I, I was trying the not to do it. I was not going to fall into the pad. I was like, no, they're not going to get me. It's bigger than that. It right. is bigger than that. It is. It is. Everybody used to go crazy for it. It's healthy, but yeah. yeah. It puts it to shame. 
It yeah. does. <laughs> but you know, the George Foreman was a real thing. It's like when you think about movements when it comes to appliances, that moved that, that, that moved the needle. That that moved the needle, the air fries the moved the needle. Yeah. It's the science. Yeah. The science. Yeah, the science behind it. And you took anything and you can even bake in it. That's crazy. Yeah. What you got enough to bake in? But our grandma also will probably look that sad way. Yes. That sounds like I'm going to cook my own food. I'm like, how? What kind of wine are you using? The air fryer. I'm like, what? Pompino. <laughs> yes. yes. Mm -hmm. So we're on to our next dish, everybody. Muscles of wine. Now, have you already done anything to the muscles or they're going to open up on themselves? Um, the muscles are going to open up by themselves. Okay. I had to wash the muscles earlier. Okay. This is purely for aromatics. Mm -hmm. You know, smell, the smell flavor. Mm -hmm. See, red onions, yes. some peppers. I'm gonna put on medium high. I'm just gonna put that in the skillet. towards the end. Alright? Okay. Mushrooms are going to put in there. And we have some tomatoes already diced up. Those are going now. Like, okay, chef, what you doing here? <laughs> All right, so I ain't seen no seasons yet. Correct! Right. Here's what we're going to do with the seasons. Black pepper. Somebody was saying, I hear somebody on food land saying, where the salt at? <laughs> the salt is coming, surely. But it's coming in form of something else. Okay. Some garlic. So we got minced garlic and some garlic powder. And you're not being generous, you're going to put a little bit. So we have to guess about what? About a full teaspoon of garlic. Okay. Is there a such thing as too much garlic powder? Oh yes, you can yes. actually screw it up. This is um body complete all in one season right here. So put this in there as well, which I don't have that much left. So ooh. Okay. No, well, you did. Yes I did. But guess no, what? You did. I got some, you got I got some, some pre-roll seasoning. <laughs> so with the too much garlic I found. Okay. For example, in my mac and cheese, if I do go a little bit overboard on it, some sour cream or creme fraiche will tame down that garlic okay. All right, bay leaf. Okay. You put it on put two bay leaves in there because okay. the whole thing is about flavor, mm -hmm. all right? But the garlic is already in there, the butter is in, I'm going to add the wine next. Remember, this is mussels and wine. Right. Okay. So we need to set the stage so we can make the champion of this dish, the mussels, but also the wine, all the corresponding elements that go along with it. So this is Italian seasoning. And I got was generous with Italian seasoning. Sapa, can you give me some bread to substitute up with? I'm just like this. We got some tortillas. Okay. Who's this guy? <laughs> you know when you have muscles, you gotta get that wine juice up with that bread. You gotta suck it up in here. That's my basket. Okay. I make a special request. Yes, special, very special request. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, no salt went in, right? Yeah. But the Cajun seasoning has salt in it. Yes. That's where the salt is. Okay. The Cajun seasoning. Now we're trying to put in our wine. Oh, I got gloves on. I can't open that. Did yeah. you put you put the complete in there too, right? No. Oh, you didn't. All right. Oh. Oh. There we go. So, all these aromatics are starting to smell pretty good right about now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's. Pick it up another notch or two. For those at home, this is a Pinot Grigio white wine. It smells amazing already. It does. It smells great. So, what we're going to do is we have enough wine in here. We're going to add some more wine, actually. 
But I need for all this stuff to start blending together and stuff for it before I start adding in the muscles. That whole shake that it people are interested in finding your content or finding you when it comes to meal prep, the holiday, the holiday seasons are coming up. So how many of you all are cooking for holidays? Hey, come on now. Tasting for the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> how many of you are cooking for the holidays? Real the muscles. Because, okay, now what's that? What am I? What am I seeing with the white? Some muscles. Ice. Ice. So for those of us that don't want to cook or can't cook or you know, I do meal prep. Yes, he does. Mm. So how can he find you for these services in the DMV? Um, let's see. I have my own website. It's on my own website. Oh, this is Rosemary, by the way. It's a Rosemary. Okay. Mm. Like the site, Chef Nick. So the site is countryunlimitedllc.com. Uh, country. Well, and the country is spelled with a K. K. Okay. Yes. I want to be different. So where can they find your content? Now my content is actually on YouTube. If you look up Home Chef Nick on YouTube, you'll find it. And of course we're going live on Facebook. So for those of you all that have events coming up and you've been asked to bring a side but you don't want to go to the grocery store and just pick up anything or you can't cook, yeah, that's really waffling now. Holiday yes. party, yes. Friend, friends, that. Friendsgiving. Yes, how about it? Chef Nick will take care of you. And that's what you want, because sometimes, sometimes you can cook, but you don't feel like it. So why? Exactly. So why? Leave, leave it up to somebody else. Especially at Friendsgiving, because you already know what that's you're going to be doing. Yeah. <laughs> conveniences. Right. And what are we working for? Conveniences. That's there it exactly. Is. Right. <laughs> The convenience of being able to pick up the phone and say, I need you to make this. Yes. Thank you very much. And I'll pick it up. Here's a cash app. How about that? Cash app. <laughs> All right. For those at home, I have some sprigs of cilantro. Okay. Okay? We're going to throw that in there. So people who think that cilantro tastes like, what, what do they call it? Soap. So it does. If you, if you use too much. I it does. That that <laughs> it does. If you, if, you, if you overuse it, it does. I don't think you agree with <laughs> so if, if, if you over that, if you, if you over I'm about to look it up because I heard that it's something to do with like a person's genes. Oh, but not. Chef Nick told me something dope. He said, Do you know that ground up coriander is cilantro? Oh. Is that what you don't? Is that what you don't? Yeah, it is. Okay. Well, it make is. sure I said right there. <laughs> and again, I said I you never knew that. And I love it. cilantro. It gives off. It gives off. I like cilantro, cilantro too. Cilantro. My sister does not. It like gives it. off a soapy. See, it is a. It is a issue with genetics. Like that's a thing. Back to the science with food. Back to that the science. Is a thing. And, and for years, and that's why I stayed away from guac. Because if you go to certain restaurants and make walk they um, on site, they're overwhelmed yeah. with the cilantro. They they're yeah. overwhelmed with the cilantro and with the red onion. So yeah, it has to be a balance for me. I'm really funny about that. But it's a it's a genetic thing. Well, I the take that. It tastes like soap. If you think it tastes like soap, there's something going on with your genetics. <laughs> so it's you. It could be me. It's I, not the cilantro. I, 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 it's I, I, you. I, 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 I mean, it, there's you're, all for people you're heavy handed. Yeah, y'all right. Your jeans is nuts. So, I, so it's 50% me and 50% people overhanded. <laughs> you know, and just a little heavy handed. Alright, so we have our, I'm feeling this, I'm, this, this, I'm feeling it all the way up with muscles. Please thank you. Alright. These muscles have been sitting in some ice. So they're starting to split, which is a good thing for us. We won't take that long for the cook. So the splitting is them actually dying, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rest in peace, our friends. We make sure you get put to good use. That's your friend. Well, yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and add some more wine. Okay. And then we're gonna cover this up. There we go. Hey, chef, can I buy you for some wine? Yes, ma'am. You can have some wine. And we keep drinking this wine and I'm thirsty. <laughs> right. Never a good thing. Look at that. Look at me. I'll get one in the sun. So I think the mac and cheese ought to make his debut. There they go. Look at that. Yeah. Is that 
butter rising to the top. Mm -hmm. And guess what? We now have all these dishes in the oven. There's never the time to cook. It's all about prep. That's the key. It's all about prep. Yeah. You know? Because have you ever noticed how there's some recipes where it seems like the prep takes more, it takes longer than the actual mm -hmm. cook in the dish? It and always does. Yeah. Prep always all right, so yeah. this is I said nice. I was start doing yeah. better. Oh, yeah, perfect example. Yeah. Nice and cheesy, right? Mm -hmm. Guess what? Okay. This is the final piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's serve some This is how you want your mac and cheese to actually be, right? Nice, creamy, gooey and gooey. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not even gonna front like I don't have questions. I need to taste it. That good. Yeah, you need I'm to hear your mac front. and cheese when you wait. I ain't gonna front. What just happened? It's just happen, you it's crazy how, how, it yeah. how yeah. we yeah. have turned the sound of mac and cheese to make it so dirty. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta hear it. How, is it? Yes. how did they turn the mac and cheese to something so dirty? <laughs> So we take it. We take it. You talking about? That. I'm not going to touch that. <laughs> and you want to be able to hear it. Um, All right. So, <laughs> hey, what do you think? Just from looking over there, I think it tastes better than it looks, and it looks great. All right. So you also have the sample place, right? Yes. You don't want a sample now? Yes. I'm sure you don't want to wait till then. That's the only punch we get. I'm sorry. Did you? Well, under an hour, Chef Nick will take care of you. We've got last minute requests to accommodate you. Alright. Now, for those at home, these are bean sprouts. Cooking now, we do have a controversial topic. Uh -oh. What's the controversy? Please. All right, all right hey. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> <laughs> the, the coach is putting you in the game. <laughs> I can't even enjoy my life. <laughs> no. No. Come on, I'm going to enjoy it. What's the topic? Oh my goodness. Yeah, let's, let's let our newcomer <laughs> jump in first. Oh, wow. See, I, t I told you he was going to do that, didn't yeah. I? I was like, oh, put it out there first. So you that that just what the topic is and, and that hate is already playing the ball. And what are we talking about? We talking about Netflix and chill. Yes, Netflix and chill. I don't allow it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. So I'll allow it. I think it depends on what you're looking for, what you're trying to get out of what you're looking for. <laughs> mm -hmm. It all depends on the players involved. Alright. Chef how long does it take the, um, Well, I was talking about it as far as the muscles open up. Three minutes. Netflix and Honestly, sometimes you just don't feel like going nowhere. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So, who, sometimes you don't feel like putting on the clothes and the makeup and the this and the Wait, that. Yeah. And then the driving and the traffic and the... Sometimes just, I feel none of it. You know, people feel like, oh, that just means that they want to have sex. I'm like, just say no. It doesn't, like, people it doesn't always have to be that. Make it suits a big deal. Just say no. Amen. Right. <laughs> I, I'll look it out. It doesn't always have to be the screen asking, are you still there? <laughs> you can legit be Netflix and chill. Yeah. 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 Right. Netflix and chill and wild like I mean, it's that part, hard. I just want to eat. I guess and watch TV. I think that women typically, um, it's the first date thing that makes yeah. women, that turn women off. Like, now hey. that I, I can understand that. You're right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, that's this is like the zero first effort. Zero effort. Yeah, right. And then you're trying to come over. You got safety issues. You got a whole bunch right. of red flags going on. Right. Yeah. You think the women have no, but then you said there's safety issues. And there's like no God, effort. God you said no effort. I'm sorry. That's what I. Yeah, like oh, God, yeah. God just wants to Netflix and chill off the bat. So you're saying he puts in no effort? Yeah. Yeah, to me, that's yeah. very little effort. Yeah, yeah. Very little unless effort. unless he's planned it, he got the plan on what's getting watched, he's bringing the food, 
unless he's doing all that, it's not that much effort. They swear, oh, I'm going to cook you this wonderful meal. I'm a great cook. And you're like, oh, okay. Like, like, no, no, uh oh, no, no, spaghettios. <laughs> no, thank you. So let me ask you a question as a man. Because, so as a man, how do you feel about women that after 2020 happened, that some of them, hmm, that some of them kind of that were very, Woo. House fed and did oh. everything and was always about making sure that oh, nails, hair done, everything did. Because when We're I walk, talking about outside. When I walk past my mirror, I'm like, I right, do something with the hair. Mm -hmm. Forget everything else. The hair, I have to do something. I cannot walk around the house even just like that. Right. But I throw a house dress on, a house, what you call a house coat or <laughs> All right, so here are sundress. The right okay. okay. So you want to smell how the muscles are? I oh, smell yeah. over here, child. Mm -hmm. Ooh, yeah. They don't smell like muscles anymore. No. Dude. You, you can smell all different flavors I had then. Plus the wine. The wine gives that, that extra oomph to it. Aromatics. And guess what? Then I ain't gonna count. We now have the noodles. Oh, oh so you're gonna throw that in the end of the house. I'm gonna do it like that. You just, <laughs> you like, look, I'm going to save this the goodness and throw some noodles in here and make y'all feel a whole nother way. So when I get, when you taste this dish, you going to understand why this is actually the star and not the prime. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, you saw my video, right, of the, yes. of the muscles of wine. Yes. Where, did, did, I, did I deviate any? No. Did I do that? Mac and cheese. I want a couple of mac and cheese. I'm trying to have dollop. some cool food. <laughs> <laughs> you better do a dollop and get yourself back there. Have some cool food. My mama would be embarrassed. I know that whole, that whole decorum. <laughs> My mother would be like, "I ain't raised you like that." I don't put the hands on people's stuff like that. That's all you gotta do with it. Uh, Ma'am. Is it okay for the ladies to get some more mac and cheese? No, no, no. No, because dinner I'm is waste. coming. Uh, I'm I'm I was just I'm not gonna do that. emphasizing how good the mac and cheese is. The corn mm -hmm. is great. So what you, what'd you taste this? <laughs> Has anybody gone to like a chef's table at a restaurant? No. Mm -hmm. What is a chef's table? Done. So Chef cooks, makes mm -hmm. a bunch of courses. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And you're just basically this. You're it's trying. It's a tasting. Yeah, you're, you're trying, trying all different dishes. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Chef Nick is doing it right. He is. <laughs> He's doing a great job. And see, sometimes people use that as a couple's date too. Okay. Yeah, this bring is a, a couple's date. Yeah. So you know, so if you have a few couples, you can get together. You all can do that. You don't have um, a chef come in. Mm -hmm. Oh, Chef Nick, mm -hmm. he can do that. You know, for or a cooking class. A cooking class. Or, Alright, so some people need skills. <laughs> now this looks completely different from when I first put it in. Yeah. So we just need about two minutes. Literally two minutes. Really? Let like that top get foggy. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna set it for two minutes. Because at, when that's done, I'm gonna remove the noodles and I'm gonna put in the rest of the muscles. Okay. And what is the ice doing? The ice is just keeping it fresh. And yeah, pretty much. The you know, they are the yeah, opening. Sure. See they're opening already because they need they you notice know any cold? You know, you want it frozen. Right. And so this came from the freezer out here. So the ice is trying to delay it from opening all the way up. Mm -hmm. Because once, once they crack open, they're dead. Right. Know, and then you, it's time to eat it. Right. right. Are you getting your seafood from the wharf or you, you're going like different places? Which? Different places. Okay. So what I do is for my seafood, I go to Restaurant Depot. Okay. Where. Where is that? Uh, it's actually here. There's um, a few. There's a few different it's, it's, it's one of Capital Heights, actually. Oh. So, the seafood at Restaurant Depot, fresh. The, the shrimp is not this big. It's like like that big. Yeah. Prawn, you know? right? Oh, yeah. Prong. It's restaurant quality. Okay. So, it's like a Costco BJ situation. We need a membership card. Mm -hmm. But, but the plus is, is that the membership 
um, is free, you have to have a business license. So, or or, or, or 501c3, have a non profit. Yep. To eat, yeah. to buy food from there. To buy food from there. Really? So, unlike us. Yeah, yeah. So, so, like, like Sally's. You know that you have to. I thought the order for you to purchase. Not Sally's. This is like a hair place mm -hmm. somewhere in Woodbridge. Mm -hmm. I went in to buy some stuff and they was like, where's your. Wait, where's your business license? You know, I was you know, like, what? This is not yeah. just a regular beauty mm -hmm. supply store. Like, no. No. Beauty for you? No, not beauty for you in the back door. <laughs> That's a plus. So if you have a business license out there, a 501c3, you know, je definitely um, get a membership with Restaurant Depot. And it's oh, worth God. it. It's worth it. Okay. And all you have to do is just, um, um, when you go to scan, it'll let you know when your when your license is about due. So you have to bring your new license to kind of show it to them. And it's free to go. Yeah. So I do have some uh, tortilla chips for the hand of wine for the uh, guacamole. If anyone wants to taste that later on. And I have a special sauce that I made to go on the platter. Okay. So I'll tell you how I made it in a second. I need to warm it up. Oh, boy. Say it up. Okay. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh, now it's time to take out. There you go. It was two minutes. Yeah. That's done. Let's take it out. So I know that COVID called an hour. Oh, you got your appetizer, you got your main course, and you got a side dish. Mm -hmm. All an in an hour. That's crazy. And a lot of education. That's yeah. Look, I just got here. I'm about to now. Oh. <laughs> really? Really? Foodie Lane, you hear that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I this is a thing. It's the real thing. I mean, it's the <laughs> real thing. I mean, I'm a foodie, but I don't have a big appetite. That's the sad part. I think that's the one thing that being working from home is saving a lot of people. Mm, yeah. That, that after lunch, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's an issue. Yeah. That, that oh, nice. Nice. Awesome. nice. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. We're doing the tandem. Where are you going? Do it's it. DC skydiving or something like that. Okay. Groupon. $119, I think. Do yeah. it. I, I love, love it. Love it. Yeah. I'm going to do it. I keep. I already what bought it. I already bought it. 45 Yeah. I already bought it. And I'm just like. I keep telling myself I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Do they record it for you? You can buy it. Okay. Go. I keep saying I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm psyching myself up for it. Right. I'm just Listen, like, one more. Okay. Uh, take that leap of faith. Yeah. I take this. Yep. That's yeah. what it says for you. Yeah. I think that's a pretty good birthday thing. Oh yes. I think that's amazing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I wanted to do it last year for my 40th, and I didn't. So, next year. No matter what you're good at hand. Sorry. <laughs> what do you want to do with that? I'll pick that up. Pick your 13. Yeah. We got it. Sorry. We and we can say that, but then there's other words that, you know, <laughs> a little racier. H over F. Yeah. Okay, so what did you enjoy the most? The mac and cheese. It was the mac and cheese for me. <laughs> and that guacamole is good. <laughs> hey. Are you still deciding? I'm still deciding, man, because I was pleasantly surprised by the mushroom cap and the mac and cheese, too. So what? You, you think you was going to like it or, you, or, or the flavors were, were... I was just, like, side-eyeing the mushroom cap. I was saying to myself, I'm going to just eat what's inside. And mm -hmm. when I actually tasted the whole thing together, I was like, oh, okay. I've been missing out on mushroom. Mushroom is scary. Mushrooms are scary. Um, <laughs> like, I just tried it's truffles scary thing, for the first but time good. recently. Okay. And what about the um, caviar? It's a nice addition. Thirsty looks like. All right, told you. Try red. So Black is good, but try red. <laughs> Once you add the caviar to it, it gives you that, that extra oomph to it that you just like catches you off guard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm telling you, the first time I was like, what is these mushrooms about? 
when my chef had different types of mushrooms, I was like, what? And then I was like, yum, what? <laughs> now, what about the salsa from the, um, the primes? It's a pleasant addition, man. I had a yellow. Yeah, so you say it's raspberry, pineapple. Well, you ain't gonna get out the rest. No, I'm giving it to you right now. Okay. So what I did was, um, the base was filtered water. Okay. Uh, then raspberries. Filtered water that makes a difference. So I'll say this for you. Uh, uh, see the essential water. Okay. The essential water is your al alkaline water. That's nine point five. Okay. okay. So that's good water. Okay. Anything you know, alkaline up. So I use alkaline water as the base. Okay. Then I put in raspberries. Put in like a whole bunch of raspberries in it. I'll put in pineapple. I'll cut up a fresh pineapple mm -hmm. and I'll put the fresh pineapple in it. Mm -hmm. Then I put in the, the all in one season, but the, uh, the body in season. Mm -hmm. Somebody put in the um, in some of, some of the dishes. Mm -hmm. Then I also put in some apricot brandy. Apricot? Apricot brandy. Okay. And I let that simmer about 30 minutes. Mm. Afterwards, I got a strainer and a bowl, and I poured it through the strainer into the bowl. Mm -hmm. And what was left into the strainer, I tried to strain out into the bowl. Mm -hmm. So, what you see is what was strained out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a nice little mix right there, and the flavor just it just adds to what's missing from your meat. Meat was already tender mm -hmm. because it has a smoky flavor to it mm -hmm. but now you add in another component to that which like wow wait a minute what is this <laughs> exactly you build that you build a flavor profile mm -hmm. and then in your um your pasta you get the muscles in one with the pasta mm -hmm. the pasta spicy did you taste the spice see to me everything's spicy like if i can taste a little spice i'm like Makes me nervous. <laughs> um, but people love the spicy. It just, has, it just can't be overwhelming. Because mm -hmm. um, that takes away from it sometimes. It mm -hmm. does. We can't, mm -hmm. we can't taste everything else. Mm -hmm. it, needs to, it needs to be last. It doesn't need to be powerful. Mm -hmm. It needs to be last in that. Hit your palate. And the crab mac and cheese? Perfect. So it was not overpowering. Who needs a rule? Who needs a rule? But there's a rule in there. He just, it is. He just did it differently. Yeah, something different. The rule is there. Yeah, I just did it differently. And it is. I showed and, you and without, while cooking. Yeah, and without flour. Oh, you didn't use flour? No, no, no. Remember, I did some scratch. You saw me do it for scratch. I did. I did. The rule comes in on the back end. And no egg. <laughs> so it's not a rule then. No it's not a red. Well, yeah, because no. what makes a rule would be if you have flour. But the thing about it is, though, if you got to think about it, on the back end of it, when I'm taking it out of the oven, mm -hmm. that's when your roux forms. So I didn't need the flour, but I formed I formed the roux in the, on the back end of the process. Mm -hmm. So yes, you can. So you said you've done shrimp macaroni? Mm-hmm. Lobster. Lobster. Mm -hmm. This is crab. Mm -hmm. And then the next one's going to be combination? The seafood. Seafood. Okay. So, at the end of on Halloween, I'm going to do um, a seafood mac and cheese. And that's okay. going to be all mozzarella cheese. And when it gets plated on your plate, you will have mushrooms. I mean, you'll you have the uh, shrimp. Mm -hmm. You will have a uh, crab cake and some scallops. Scallops. So, so the pan seeps. That group is in for a real treat. Mm -hmm. Sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I love scallops. So you see what this menu is like. <laughs> Expensive menu. It is. <laughs> you like it is. I mean, you paying seven feet. Yeah. yeah you see, like, we had what? And your group was like what? Five or six people. And they was like, nah, I, I, if I got paying seven, I ain't coming. They, told they you did that? say that. They said that. Yeah. Twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess Your everybody boss. ain't able, but. Now, Come where, on, where now. else can you go when you get something like this? Like, like you trying to eat prime rib for free and mussels. Nothing. Where they do that? And this is a crab mac and cheese. <laughs> yeah, crab mac. Like where they do that? So it's a low uh, expectation. If this was a meal in a in a regular restaurant, right? Not 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 a one star, but a Michelin style restaurant. This right here probably cost you upwards of close to hundred bucks. It would. Or more. Yeah. It would. What? Well, first of all, you have two entrees. But one of them is not used as an entree. The, the prime are not not using this as an entree. It uses it more like more as a side. 
Oh wait, so but, what's but, the entree? but with the, the, um, with the mac and okay. But if you think about it, with the with the way you plated it, it is an entree because you have you have your mac and cheese and then you have the prime. Mm -hmm. So in, in a restaurant, that's considered a full meal, you know. And my people, you, my so people. basically you have two entrees. <laughs> Your, 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 but your lead, you want, you want, you want, you want, you want the muscles and wine to be your lead. But in theory, you do have two entrees. So they're, so they're basically getting two entrees for the price of, of one low end entree. Because yes. you're paying twenty dollars. Like you pay, you paying Applebee's Fridays money, and you're getting prime rib and muscles. Like, come on now. My question to you is, why didn't you backfill the spots? They just like recently told you this. Because you know like people in the group want to want to come to sit at your table. So the reason why I didn't you back... You should have told us to bring a guest. Um, well, Meredith backfield one of the spots. Mm -hmm. uh, someone okay. hit me this morning and said they had an issue because they had a family member that, that had gotten ill. Okay, okay that's valid. Mm -hmm. We're good with that. Mm -hmm. But everybody else, you don't, you don't even give me a reason why you're not coming. Hmm. So I'm like, okay. And from... A per perspective on camera views, angles, and taping and recording, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. The less people, the better it is to get people get more people into the shot. Right. Yeah, I'm just thinking mm -hmm. about the way like everybody was hitting up that post. Like, I want to go. I want to go. I want to do it. Because I remember you wanted to stop at like so it's, the, you wanted to stop like the middle of November, right? And now you're into 2022. Um, because of the demand. I have. Shows I have Sundays booked over to December fifth. Now uh, I've even booked some Saturdays too. The first Saturday I have booked is next Saturday actually. So next week will be a double weekend, mm -hmm. Saturday and a Sunday. I think from now on, man, just have them lock in the sitting fee before you even move forward with yeah. group chats or anything. Yeah, because it's a shame. Put it out there. Yeah, the sitting fee is this. And yeah. So you, I mean, you all see what you get. You, right. you, you get a this is a gourmet Michelin Michelin style meal. Mm -hmm. huh? Like sitting fee confirms your spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People are so a. And <laughs> especially so this area. Aggie. Like, 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 don't, don't throw twenty dollars at the smallest thing. At the smallest thing. Like that's nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In this area. And, you know we have like, to be. Everyone isn't able. Different, I get it. Twenty dollars is nothing. Mm. It's nothing down there too. When I think about where you know what it is they do with their money. Mm, you know, True. in this day and age, twenty, you know, you can sneeze at the dollar store. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> you know, like wait. You, you rather blow twenty dollars at Feather and Finn or or here for a real meal? Good company. You know about yeah. that. You know about yes, sir. Yeah. I'm surrounded by two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I probably should be. Yeah. Yeah, but it's it's about your level of expectation and what you what you've been exposed to and what you think you're gonna get. So I think sometimes when people see it and they don't know so now that more people are, are experiencing chef's mix you know um tasting it'll get out that it's really authentic right and that you know you, it's really worth your money i think some people until they know they don't know you yeah. know so i'm just trying to grow my show because i'm trying to make this you know i'm trying to grow it. i'm trying to get get picked up by, by a network somewhere you know mm -hmm. that's, that's my goal that's mm -hmm. your you know so i'm not charging a awful lot of money I know. To you, it's an investment. To, to us, it's a treat. Like, for right. real, for real. Yeah, because who cooked like this today? Like, seriously. <laughs> crab pasta or crab... Um, prime rib, pr seafood pr pasta. Prime rib alone. Hello, yeah. They don't know no better. They don't know any better. They just don't know any better. So maybe it's better that people come can actually appreciate the meal. Mm -hmm. That's the key. That's, that's what you want for any business, you know. Yeah. Um, they, they talk about you, you having your own tribe. I don't know, you know if you want to own your own businesses, but when you do, there's a niche market that, that's, that you specifically speak to, and those are the people that are always going to come to you and support. And what happens is that base grows based off of people like you. So as you're sitting here, you recognize the value, and you tell your other friends who are like you that recognize the value, mm -hmm. and it grows exponentially, and you end up having more people that are about what it is that you're trying to, and that's what you want. Right. You know, people that have a level of understanding and appreciation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is a quality meal. It is. It's a quality meal. I concur. It's a steal, man. For $20, it's a steal. And yeah. it's a freshly <laughs> prepared meal. Yeah. Not rushed, not not um, bag and boil like, you know, you get in some of the chains. Mm -hmm. Cause that's you know that's what they you know they pretty much are doing. There. No shade to Trader Joe's, but this ain't no Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> the longest time it took was for me to do all the plating. You know, right. other than that, everything was done. For me, 
I took my time doing it, but for you, it probably seemed like I was like, damn, he's done like this. It did seem like it was quick, but we watched it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you watch process. So you mm -hmm. learn and you know how to do it for yourself. Well, you're going to school for it. But for, for people that don't know and they didn't watch their grandmothers cook or their moms cook mm -hmm. or their moms couldn't cook, you know, they're learning. So it's, right. um, so it's an experience. So again, repeat, you know, for, you know, the foodie audience, you know, where they can find you, how they can get in contact with you because you do a lot. You do catering, you do, you meal know, prep. you, you know, prep, yeah. you do a meal prep. So based off what it is that you want to eat, what you can eat, what you're into eating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the holidays are coming up, people, so if you don't want to have to cook your mac and cheese, buy by the pan. You know, you may be, have everything else together, mm -hmm. but you don't want to have to... Do you know how much time that takes off your plate? But have to do your sides? Work or, if you, <laughs> or in reverse, you only want to do the sides and you don't want to smoke a meat, fry a turkey, <laughs> defrost a turkey, stuff a bird, like... That's Chef what we did Nick. last year. See, when, see, I actually do a healthy turkey, actually. Okay. I do an air fried turkey. An air fried? Mm-hmm. And, and I even put the wood chips in it, too. So it gets okay. a little bit of smoke in it as well. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I go beyond that because I create a brine, and I put mm -hmm. that, and I let that turkey sit in the brine. Mm-hmm. About 24 to 48 hours, that turkey sitting in the brine. Okay. Then afterwards, I, I create... Um, a nice marinade, and I inject it from head to toe with the marinade, and mm. then I sit it into the air fryer, and the air fryer sits outside. You know, I want that in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, and the turkey is literally done within about an hour and a half. The turkey is done, depending on the week of the turkey, mm -hmm. and it's done. It's so, right people, now. you all are hearing that. You know, you know, we kind of got used to the fried turkey. We, we all know how to. You know, bake it in our ovens and, and use a bag and all that. We all know about that. But an air fried turkey that you don't have to do. And some of us travel up and down the highway. So, you know, we may not even be having a meal in a DMV. We got to go to Philly. You got to go to New York. Mm -hmm. You know, pack your stuff up. Boom, hit the road. Right. He's doing it for you. So definitely consider that in the meal prep during the week. How many of us have time to go to the grocery store, figure out what we're going to eat. Dedicate your Sunday to do, to do it. Yeah. Saturday and Sunday to a certain extent. You know, because you have a life, you know, you're busy, you know, you're professional. You know, most of us are professional people, you know, so definitely consider Chef Nick. So you have your, um, so you have your website, so say that again for the... Uh, yeah. So the website is countryunlimited.com, no, countryunlimitedllc.com, and the country is spelled with a K. So that's how you reach the website. And on the website, you know, you see um, my content info there, you also see how to... Um, different things I've prepared over the years. You know that's there. The menu I didn't put on the website because I want you to be able to contact me if you have, ish, if you have a question about menu, contact me. That's why I put the contact there info there. I didn't put a menu there on purpose. You see the different foods I cook, and plus, if you watch, uh, if you're starting to watch the show now, now you see that I can cook more than a lot of other people mm -hmm. do. You know, then if you want to see the content of what I create, then look for me as Home Chef Nick on YouTube. I'm there. Definitely. So you have that information, you'll be able to reach out to them. Yeah. And please, please subscribe because videos, are, new videos are posted weekly. Yes. Yes. Chef Nick is right on time. Friendsgiving, Thanksgiving, holiday parties. How about birthday parties, parties, bar mitzvahs, Ramadan shindigs, rent okay, parties? Look. Go ahead, girl. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, yeah, name it all. You know, baby second birthday Sweet. party. You know, because you you know we celebrate ever not everything but everything. Uh, game night. <laughs> Yes. Oh. <laughs> what is friends giving? I've game. heard of this. Okay, so the whole concept of friends giving is a lot of us are single, may yeah. not have any children, may not have any family that lives in, live in the area. So mm -hmm. you got you kind of get together and have Thanksgiving, but you're all friends mm -hmm. and you're thankful for your friends. I think it's a whole. I think it's a beautiful concept okay. because it addresses the fact that all of us in, are in different places and stages in our life, mm -hmm. but we still deserve an opportunity to celebrate and be among people that love and care about us. Okay. And have a good meal on top of it. I've like, heard the term and I was just like, what yeah. in the world is that? I usually and, do it like a week or two or three before Thanksgiving. Okay. Yeah. And okay. So, so at this point we're going to say thank you everyone for tuning in <laughs> and have a blessed and great rest of the day. <laughs> Bye y'all. Bye. Bye. You missed the treat. <laughs> sure you wish you had a smell of it.